That's terrible. I ought to be ashamed of myself. <laughs> hey, 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 everybody. Happy Friday, TGIF. We've made it to another weekend. Thank goodness I fished. And I'm Jen Cravasi from Jekyll Bates, and this is your weekender version of the shop update. I've got a couple of things to get into today and I've got a few pieces to show you. I've got an order that's going out to Cedric Jones. I've been doing orders all week and filling them so that's been the reasoning behind the absence of videos. Usually when I'm rocking and rolling we've, I've just coming off this Labor Day sale. I've got a lot of stuff to play catch up on which is why I don't take a whole lot of days off. But uh, before we get into the baits I, I've been getting questions and it, 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 it's occurred to me that even though some of us may have been in this game for a long time as far as uh, painting and airbrushing and the customized stuff, some may not be. Some might be brand new at it or you're an avid angler and you're watching the channel or reaching out to me because you just have some questions. So I got a question this week. Um, on on my Facebook Messenger and it was what is the difference between a holographic and a standard bait and the basics to that is that a standard bait is going to look something like this it's a blank and, and on, in this particular case this is uh, one of those Atlas blanks is a 1.5 silent from Dinger it's got that circuit board lip and it is a clear, transparent bait. Um, there's no foiling on this. And when when you hear the word or see the word holographic, that generally means that it's a pre-foiled bait. And a lot of the companies that sell or distribute or press these blanks use that terminology so that, that we just translate that across to, to our websites too, those of us that are selling our custom lures once we've painted them. As opposed to, here's a 1.5 that is holographic. Okay, and, and I'm showing you this, but I want to show you a different, different version of a holographic. So this is a lipless that came from Schultz, and you can see right here that seam where the foil has been hot glued to this bait first of all when you use paints on this you want to maintain this foil as much as you can you want to actually still be able to see that uh, when you're when you're handing this bait off to whoever has purchased it from you or even if you're just making them for yourself you still want to be able to see this flash because that's why they're purchased is for that flash and it's a really cool flash um, but that's kind of ugly so in order to make that disappear most of us are going to put on a white primer. This this has got the same thing underneath of it, but now you really can't see that. And the primer also helps you to put that top layer on so that you can work a little bit more freely with fading and blending down into still being able to see that. So on this one, I've gone ahead and primed the top and the bottom of that, and I'll probably clean it up a little bit more before I paint it. Um, and a lot of these foiled baits, if they have a lip on them, they're going to come already um, with cellophane and, and tape. But I always take that off because I try and do a real clean taping around all the corners. And sometimes when that's coming from overseas, because they are, all these, all these baits are coming from overseas, not necessarily the cleanest tape job that you're going to get. So if you want to be as OCD as I am... Um, I, I always remove that stuff and then put some fresh masking tape on it. But that's the difference. Um, it's, it's just when you're looking at it, it's the difference between a standard and a holographic. And these are both dinger baits right here. The lipless that I showed you was a Schultz. But basically, when you hear the word holographic, and they're, they're a little more expensive to, for us to purchase, so that usually translates in about 50 cents to a dollar more, at least on my website, depending on which bait it is. Um, that you're going to pay for the holographic but it's really cool it certainly gets the job done these are fantastic baits to throw especially if you're anywhere with stained water um, that it, this, this, the, the flash just pops right off that bait so I just wanted to clear that up you guys are asking 
um, because I do sell the options um, you can choose between standard and holographic on a lot of my baits on the website so I just wanted to answer that question because it's a great question you know and at first glance I'm like oh everybody knows that but maybe not everybody does know that so I just wanted to clear that up there you go and um, this needs to be primed but then you want to use transparent paint on that too because you really want to still be able to see that holographic flash so that being said that's the mystery solved for this morning and I hope I was able to teach you guys something. And, and you know, if you're if you're just an angler that's looking to get some really cool custom baits, uh, there's certainly a lot of us to choose from out here in the uh, in the industry that sell reliable. It's not just me. There's there's a lot of folks to choose from, but we all have certain independent styles to what we do. So um, you're you're going to see that across a few websites that you know folks that offer the holographic. So enough about that. Oh, and then you also have like this. This is not holographic. This is a chromed bait, and and some of the blanks now are that are being offered. This is a Phantom Lure, uh, so this is a brand name, but this is a chromed bait, and that's that's a non-prism because there's no flash or pop to that outside of just a, a chrome. Looks like the bumper of a of a beautiful old Mustang, <laughs> and I say that because I used to be I had a '66 Mustang and. Anyways, nostalgia, that's a, an entirely different conversation for another time. But there's your chrome, and it's, it doesn't have that, that prism effect to it. This is going out to Cedric. This whole, the rest of what I'm going to show you today is going out to him. And he is um, also an avid watcher of Tackle Junkie 81, who's a fellow YouTuber and colleague and friend. Um, who has a phenomenal, if you guys have not checked out Tackle Junkie on the weekends, he's got a great Sunday Night Live. Uh, it's a very interactive Q&A session and just basically shoot the bull and talk fishing for about an hour each Sunday evening as you wind down your weekend. So go check him out. I will leave his channel description linked below for you guys. He's been doing it a long time. I know I've mentioned him before, but uh, I, I'm a proponent of, of him and the other YouTubers out there. You know, it's a small community as it is with fish and it's not all about the you know I'm better than you and you're better than me and I've got the best and you've got the best it's never been about that for me I try to make sure that everybody that I come into contact with um, I, I try and promote and, it, and it's not just about you know Jen, Jekyll Bates and Jen Crevasse and I really I, I love to teach and I, I love to make sure that you guys are are succeeding as well in what you try and accomplish and if you're a youtuber hey the more of us the better the industry is changing and i think that this is a wave to the future and uh if, if you're just a just starting out on youtube uh, i have not made uh how to do it on youtube and how to be successful at it because i don't feel that i myself am successful at it yet but we're getting there um a lot of it is just consistency and putting out videos and the more you do it, the more proficient you're going to be at it. But it takes a lot of hard work. You guys see a lot of the, the oh, she's going here and she's going there. And I'm going to do a tour in October that's going to last three weeks. And that's awesome. But what you guys don't see behind the lens is the hours and hours and hours and hours and days and months and years that we put into this. And it is actual hard work. Um, and it, it's so I. I saw on one of the favorite fishing threads, I think it was on Instagram, and it's a Bible verse as well, in a manner of speaking, that you cannot reap the harvest of a seed that you've sown on the same day. And you can't. You can't expect to be an overnight success. It's going to take a lot of hard work. So just if that's the game and you want to play that game, by all means, keep at it. Keep doing the work. Keep putting in the time. Keep putting in the you know, learn and, and get as many different flavors from as many different YouTube creators as you possibly can. There's a lot of folks out of there and there's a lot of folks that are really interested in, in videography and cinematography and, and just the art of shooting video. So that's my little soapbox, but I really, I'm encouraging you guys, if you want to, if you want to run a YouTube channel and you want to do what I'm doing, by all means, the more of us, the merrier. It's not a competition game with me. It never has been. I truly am that person that just wants to teach you how to do stuff um, and I like doing it and yes I make money on it but this is all I do for a living is paint these little pieces of plastic and bring you guys the best quality videos that I can bring you so for that I thank you for being here and a patreon and a subscriber to the channel thank you guys so much but if you're into this go do it 
go be the best at it you can. So now we have to fly through these baits. <laughs> um, but anyways, long story short, going back to Tackle Junkie, this order is going out to one of his subscribers uh, that's a crossover to my channel. So I appreciate, again, that's, that's how that whole got conversation got started. Um, I appreciate you guys out there that are... Um, that are promoting me and I will in turn promote you guys back as well because that's how we get somewhere it's not through trying to stab each other in the back it's through doing good work and and doing the, the right thing and living the right way and hitting your knees at the end of the night so that's how you do it and that's how you're successful and I believe in that because it works for me this is a Rayburn red fade and I've got a couple of these and also Cedric um, you've been waiting for a little while and I try to keep the 14 to 20 day wait time as my mantra and when i go over that like in the holidays i try and make up for it so you get an extra bait today as well um instead of your eight piece you're getting a nine piece ta-da and i'll give you a stick or two but this is that raybird red fade cool little and you know red comes back into fashion this time of year too when those small mouth are packing up like wolves and the large mouth are feeding heavy it's, it's a jerk bait game again and, and it's a hard bait game and you're you know they're moving up shallow so they can feed because the thermocline is going to be on top of them before they know it before you know it it's going to be november and then december and then we're going to be talking about pre-spawn all over again because like everything in life it's a cycle so this is a cool bait i love throwing red in the fall the winter and the spring this next one is called lake ontario and it's these are all available on the website but what you may not know is the testing that goes in behind these baits. So I've got a couple of anglers in upstate New York that I've worked with exclusively. One has been a jig tire. He does bunny buck and bucktail jigs, and he's been doing it for 27 years. Wow, almost 30 years this guy's been tying. Hand tying jigs. Don David, go look him up. He lives on jigs and things here on Facebook, and he's a phenomenal. And he runs a auction house as well. It's Don's Auction House too. So look him up. He's just an amazing jig tire and there's a lot of you guys out there as well but this is lake ontario and we played around with a lot of different patterns for lake trout and walleye and smallmouth and this particular color combination and the black and white it almost looks like a crappie but it's got that chartreuse let me pull this light down and get you guys a little bit better lit um it's got that chartreuse undertone in it this is a great catcher and it did extremely well on Lake Ontario so that's what we named it after I've got another one that's black and white that did really really well on Lake Erie so that's named Lake Erie uh, folks these have been tested you're not gonna see anything on my website that doesn't catch fish promise you that so uh, he had only ordered one of these I'm giving him an extra Ontario and the same is applied to Whitney Point Whitney Point is a reservoir and it also has a really good spillway it's public access up in upstate New York um, and it's, it's also the name of a town as well. So this is definitely a walleye pattern. It's got that bright, bright, bright fluorescent orange belly. And then a couple of different tonal qualities in blues, that light indigo and sky blue going all the way down into a deep blue and an iridescent purple. So you've got some tonal shift in there as well when it's going through the water. So Troy Maybe and Don David helped me design that pattern as well. Cedric's got a couple of lightnings, and this has got that chartreuse belly, and the lightning streaks throughout it looks like kinetic energy, and those super yellow glow eyes. So, on a 1.5 rattling, pretty cool. Love, love these. And also, last but certainly not least on this order, also because you waited we upgraded you from a standard 1.5 into a holographic and i know that i've already started wrapping these because they're going out the door this morning for him um but we upgraded you that as well and this is on that hot stick scrawl which is similar to the rayburn red fade except the pattern is backwards we've got yellow at the top and red in the back whereas on the rayburn red fade generally you're going to have a lighter color towards the tail or the belly uh, that's the difference between that. All of my hooks are six mil or uh, six size six on treble for these, and it's a KVD Elite short shank needle razor sharp points and uh, that hot stick scraw. This is going out to Cedric this morning. You guys have a fantastic day. I hope I've answered some questions. I know I rattled on a little bit, but I also just wanted to let you guys know that I love you guys on YouTube. I hope that you have a lot of success if you are a creator. 
and you're trying to get off the ground but the biggest thing is just perseverance keep doing what you're doing grab life by the fish that's another one um, she's been playing the YouTube game for a very long time it's not her primary job she's also a teacher which gotta love our teachers absolutely that's the the only way that the next generation can learn how to do what's right so I love YouTube they've been very good to me and I try to be very good to them and the other people and creators that are on there so I hope you guys have a great weekend I've got some really cool stuff planned for you guys this weekend we're gonna knock out a spray session and we're also gonna do I'm gonna try and get out fishing I was gonna go a little bit this morning but it's just gonna be 98 degrees down here in Arkansas and the place that I wanted to go this morning is packed full of cotton mouths and mosquitoes this time of year so it was like air conditioning and keeping orders or yeah so that's your order is one out for me today you guys have a great one I'll see you on the next one happy casting from Jekyll Bates mm -hmm.